Hello everyone and welcome back to my Android P Beta 5.0 overview. Since I've been talking about how to get it installed, I think it's time to show off the 5 coolest introductions to Android so far in this beta. Well currently I've had a pleasant experience in using the first developer preview and of course the first beta, however there have been a few hiccups throughout using it, some occasional freezing here or a bit of slugginess there uh, which I'll mention about a little bit in the end. So to kick things off in no particular order we have those delicious new animations. Now here in Android P we have a few new animations which we'll quickly go over right now. Uh, I'm just going to slide these on the screen. So we have new notification animations, we have a different animation for quick switching between apps using the traditional navigation bar so when you double press the recent button. We also have new animations going back to the home screen especially while using the pixel launcher, launching apps from the pixel launcher within the home screen and the app drawer, as well as opening new activities, going into new screens such as things in the settings uh, app, and as well as apps opening other apps that aren't activities. Next up we have some revamped UI elements. So we have a few new refinements of different UI components such as the more rounded notification cards, as well as the ambient display has also gotten a minor UI tweak and of course they've added the battery percentage to the ambient display, finally. So here's a quick look at the new battery settings menu here. It gives us an estimate of time remaining with our phones, which is a nice touch. And the expanded quick settings has returned to the Oreo way of left to right pages rather than scrolling, like in the first developer preview. Now I do like the scrolling they have there, and I hope it does come back in the later releases of Android P. And somewhat of a rebirth of the ticker notifications, but it's not really. So notifications now show their title in the notification bar instead of being a part of the heads up notification, which I think works well with a notch as it reduces the vertical space of the heads up notifications. Next up are the new volume controls. Now by default, the volume buttons change the media volume, a very welcome addition as many Samsung and custom ROM users have grown to know before us. But they've also removed the extended volume controls for now, which is a little bit silly but so you'll need to be in a specific context to either change the ringer or the alarm volume with the volume buttons or you'll have to change those via the sounds settings menu. Now gestures, everyone loves gestures. Now there are new gestures in Android P. First up is the new gesture navigation, although this is probably still a work in progress but it's pretty much like the fling bar and the navigation bar had a baby together and the result was something that I quite enjoyed using. The issue I had with the fling bar is that you couldn't easily repeatedly press the back button, which is why I had stopped using it on custom ROMs that did offer the fling bar, mainly to get away from pages that redirect you to advertisements or kind of keep going back really fast, right? Now Android P's gesture navigation is a good balance between the two I feel. So there's the gesture related recent, while the other two functions have stayed the same, so home and back. So if we could get some greater customization in terms of sensitivity or even different functions, and swipe gestures that could be set to the pill, uh, that would be fantastic to have. And on a side note, if you do plan on enabling this, you'll need to go to settings, system, and then gestures, and enable the swipe up from home button gesture. Another gesture that they've introduced is the prevent ringing gesture. Now this one is quite interesting, and it allows you to activate a user predetermined setting to either put it to silent, vibrate, or do nothing upon holding the power button and volume up buttons together. Now this is quite useful for putting your device on silent or vibrate without that really cool fancy ringer switcher that some phones have. Numero 4 we have our recent overhaul. Now something somewhat related to the gesture navigation is the overhaul of the recent menu. Now depending on which launcher you have you can now access your app suggestions with one swipe and with another you'll be able to access the app drawer. You can also get to the app drawer with one huge swipe as well. Now here you can tap on the apps icon and a little menu shall appear with two options, either to access the apps info or to use it in conjunction with the split screen. Now I do think this is better than how Oreo did this, where you had to hold the app icon to access the app info and to enter the split screen you would have to drag it to the top. Well, I guess that wasn't expressly obvious when I first updated to Android P, but uh, maybe that was just me. So now also in the recents view, you can now directly copy text and share images from different apps. So you're going to have to check this out. Smells like magic to me. So apparently this uses OCR or some other form of wizardry to determine the text and images that it's able to copy or share. 
which is pretty neat to be honest. Now moving on to our next thing, my new favourite addition or improvement to Android, which is the new and improved Do Not Disturb mode. It's quite simple, yet so powerful. The new What to Block setting is something that I've never thought of, but now that I've used it, it's something I'll dearly miss if they decide to take it away, or even when I go back to Oreo for a little bit. With these options, you can now set what individual disturbances you want to block, either for when your screen is on or off, which is essentially when the ambient display is showing. The options to hide status bar icons and also hide from the notification list options are a godsend. Super helpful if you need to, I don't know, maybe record videos or when you don't want to show how many notifications you get or what notifications you get while showing your phone out to someone as well. Now finally, on to some notes on performance and stability. It kind of goes without saying that although quite suitable for daily use, you'll experience the occasional freeze or sluggishness. But I have to say, the battery life in this beta hasn't diminished in any way throughout the time I've been using it. And the only time that I've noticed a severe kind of lag is when I would toggle on or off airplane mode. But even with that, it was pretty much the only time that it would freeze consistently. Well, that's all for this video. I'm very interested in seeing what else Google has up their sleeves for the remaining developer preview releases and to see how well devices with Project Treble handle Android P generic system images when the time comes. Not that I have any Treble devices with me that won't be getting the official Android P update anyways, but as usual, you can come and join me on Discord to converse in conversation or if you're looking for some help. And as always, happy flashing.